Uh, one more time, would you like to give a praise of hands to the Lord? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, good morning, church, and once again, welcome, everyone. I was going to share a little joke with you, but our brother Gary already made you laugh enough. Eh? So I leave it for next. I leave it for next Sunday. <laughs> Uh, like he already welcomed uh, to the, all the visitors today, and if, anyone here for the first time besides Rita and the, uh, his fiance? And uh, I also would like to welcome the John and Lauren Dahmer, the, fam the Dahmer uh, family. Would you like to welcome today too? It's nice to see them back. They are beautiful with children and their uh, youth kids. Hey, Amen. Um, now, like what Brother Gary was sharing with all of you, this is about to know. A little bit about us to, to know each other okay and um, today uh, last week I asked sister Susan uh, Mitchell if she can share something with us this morning I know we all have something great to say to to the people amen, amen. about what the Lord has done in our life how many have testimonies in your life yeah. yes we all do isn't it and I can't wait to hear everybody. <laughs> so you can be the next one on, okay? So I would like to ask Sister Susan Mitchell, please come and take the mic. And after she shared the testimony, I also asked Brother Gary if he wants to share the word with us this morning because Brother Paul was on, 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 on the schedule for, but um, uh, the company asked him to work for uh, today. So he called me right in time and I, and I asked Brother Gary if he can share with me. So he's coming up right after Susan. So give a welcome to Susan Jack. Uh, How long do I have right now? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, folks, because uh, <laughs> I have a hard time coming up with it. <laughs> anyway, my beloved husband has got the word that if I ramble on and I talk too much and I'm not really making sense, he's to stand up and go. <laughs> I've asked the Holy Spirit to put the words in my mouth for this morning. To speak into your life as I speak about my life. I thought maybe I would start at the beginning and uh, a good story always starts with on a dark and stormy night. <laughs> dark and stormy night. <laughs> on a dark and stormy night many, many moons ago, my mother felt the need to go to the hospital and deliver me. And uh, she couldn't get there. There, the taxis were all used up because it was a dark and stormy night and uh, she phoned for the ambulance and they said we can't come just for a baby but it, the <laughs> she eventually got there she got there by ambulance and I was delivered I feel that my childhood was just a normal childhood like a lot of people uh, I was an only child I am an only child I don't think I was spoiled, I was just fawned over, you know, and so what happens with that is that you think that the whole world revolves around you, and that's pretty hard to get out of your flesh sometimes, isn't it? But I was around adults a lot, and I think with that I learned how to perform for adults, because when you did nice things, they went, oh, isn't she cute, look at the little one, and I was just... I think this is pretty good. <laughs> My mother came from a, a Lutheran background. I wouldn't call us really a Christian family. I would call us maybe a nominal Christian family. My dad came from, I don't know what kind of a background. They were kind of a, a strange family, and yet I felt so loved by everyone. But I heard some pretty weird things out of my father's family, and strangely enough, they didn't affect me. I don't think they did, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they would talk about, oh, church is just full of hypocrites, and everybody's just trying to impress one another, and they all dress to the nines just to see, you know, this kind of stuff. And I thought, when you don't go, how do you know that? But <laughs> when I was a little girl, I lived next door to my granny, and my cousin lived there, and my mother decided to send me to Sunday school. She didn't take me, she sent me, but my cousin went with me. And I, I'm not sure how old I was, I was probably somewhere between 
I don't know, six, seven, something like that. And off we would go to, if any of you are from Kitchener, to Zion Church down on, uh, is it Weaver Street or is it Duke? No, I can't remember. That was a long way for us to travel. We probably walked 11 long, long blocks. I'm amazed when I think back that, you know, my mother let us go. <laughs> we wouldn't do that today, would we? But off we trekked to Sunday school, and I am sorry to say that I don't really remember what they taught me in Sunday school, except I remember getting freshy and crackers. <laughs> so that was the highlight of my Sunday school years at Zion. And then they were going to plant a new church, and uh, the pastor there told my mother that there was going to be a church closer to us. Well, that was good, and actually we started out in a house. Now at that time, Zion was Evangelical United Brethren. So that was the background. So we went not very far away, only a couple of blocks now. And, and I did go, I spent my, my, my early days in church. And again, I'm not really sure what I heard. And my father said, you'll never get me, you'll catch me dead inside a church. <laughs> but my mother came to church with me at uh, this little Evangelical United Brethren Church. And uh, God's hand was upon me, is all I can say. This morning in our study, we were talking about our books. Where's Julie? We were talking about the book of our life. And in the early uh, story of the, the book of my life, as I look now from the back pages, that God's hand was upon me. And had my mother not even come from a Lutheran church, and they were very active in their church, they they were the custodians of the church. and uh, But I wonder sometimes that they weren't very legalistic in their approach. I mean, I never heard prayers at the meal timetable, and I never heard talk of God except, you know, when we went to church. So let's um, fast forward now to the time when I got married. And when I got married, I had been in university, and I thought I met the man of my dreams. You know, we've all been there. And I was not born again. So I got married, and I made a poor choice. My husband was born again, and it's come to my thoughts later in life. If he was born again, what was he doing marrying me? Because we were unequally yoked. Anyway, when our son was born, my son's name is Joel, um, and I'm still believing for my son. I know God's got his hand on his life. But at the time, we now were going to the Pentecostal Church on Benton Street. Some of you maybe remember that. Now, this was pretty strange to me. Mind you, I believe the Evangelical United Brethren, Brother Armashaw, you can help me out here, were pretty fundamental in their beliefs. I remember the pastor pounding the pulpit, <laughs> and that excited me. And my aunt said, I don't need to have anybody pull, palm the pulpit. But I like, I like that passion. But I don't recall really talking about the spirit so much. But when I went, met my husband, he started to talk about more spiritual things. But he was talking about, he came from Trinidad, and he was talking about voodoo and things like that. And I said, oh, you're crazy. I've never heard of anything like that, and that doesn't affect you. That's nothing. See how little I knew? Mm -hmm. See how little the nominal churches know today? I'd never heard this stuff before. Anyway, we started going to the Pentecostal church, and certainly there was a different environment in that church. And the day that we took our son to be dedicated to the Lord, there was an altar call. Do you remember your first time when there was an altar call? Oh, my heart was just shaking within me, and I thought that I could feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit, and the flesh said, don't put your hand up, don't put your hand up, and the Holy Spirit said, shoot it up, shoot it up, and the flesh said, oh, everybody's going to look at you, and so I don't know, somehow I must have gone like this, and I thought, oh, Man, that's not too bad. Oh, well, then they had to say, those who lift up your hands, come forward. 